Hi, thank you for being with me today. Before we get started, I just want you to know that I pray for you guys. Uh, just whoever is watching the channel, whether it's just a one time or you're regularly watching, I just want you to know that I pray for you. God knows who you are and what you need, even if I don't. Um, if you want to put in the comments um, that if you have a prayer request, you can, and, and that way everybody can pray for you. Or uh, I have my email address in there that you could shoot me an email if you want, you know, just a kind of a private prayer request. I'm happy to do that too. So I just want you to know that I pray for you and I hope that your day is going really well. Um, today we're reading Proverbs 16, Leviticus 13, and Acts 16. Proverbs 16. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured, he will not go unpunished. By steadfast love and faithfulness, iniquity is atoned for, and by the fear of the Lord, one turns away from evil. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. An oracle is on the lips of a king, but his mouth does not sin in judgment. A just balance and scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to do evil, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of a king, and he loves him who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, and a wise man will appease it. In the light of a king's face there is life, and his favor is like the clouds that bring the spring rain. How much better to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. Whoever gives thought to the word will discover good, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. The wise of heart is called discerning, and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. Good sense is a fountain of life to him who has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise makes his speech judicious and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. A worker's appetite works for him. His mouth urges his arm. A worthless man plots evil, and his speech is like a scorching fire. A dishonest man spreads strife, and a whisperer separates close friends. A man of violence entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. Whoever winks his eyes plans dishonest things. He who pursues his, purses his lips brings evil to pass. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules with spirit than he who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Leviticus 13, Laws About Leprosy The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a person has on the skin of his body a swelling or an eruption or a spot, and it turns into a case of leprous disease on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons the priest, and the priest shall examine the disease area on the skin of his body. And if the hair in the diseased area has turned white, and the disease appears to be deeper than the skin of the body, it is a case of a leprous disease. When the priest has examined him, he shall pronounce him unclean. But if the spot is white in the skin of his body, and appears no deeper than the skin, and the hair in it has not turned white, the priest shall shut up the diseased person for seven days. And the priest shall examine him on the seventh day. And if in his eyes the disease is checked and the disease has not spread in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up for another seven days. And the priest shall examine him again on the seventh day. And the diseased area has faded and the disease has not spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only an eruption. And he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the eruption spreads in the skin after he has shown himself to the priest for his cleansing, he shall appear again before the priest. And the priest shall look, and if the eruption is spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous disease. When a man is afflicted with a leprous disease, he shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall look. And if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic leprous disease in the skin of his body, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. 
He shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if the leprous disease breaks out in the skin, so that the leprous disease covers all, of, all the skin of the diseased person from head to foot, so far as the priest can see, then the priest shall look, and if the leprous disease has covered all his body, he shall pronounce him clean of the disease. It has all turned white, and he is clean. But when raw flesh appears on him, he shall be unclean, and the priest shall examine the raw flesh and pronounce him unclean. Raw flesh is unclean, for it is a leprous disease. But if the raw flesh covers, recovers and turns white again, and he shall, he shall come to the priest, and the priest shall examine him, and if the disease has turned white, then the priest shall pronounce the diseased person clean. He is clean. If there is in the skin of one's body a boil and it heals, and in the place of the boil there comes a white swelling or a reddish white spot, then it shall be shown to the priest. And if the priest shall look, and if it d appears deeper than the skin, and its hair is turned white, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a case of leprous disease that is broken out in the boil. But if the priest examines it, and there is no white hair in it, and it is not deeper than the skin, but is faded, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spreads in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a disease. But if the spot remains in one place and does not spread, it is the scar of the boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or when the body has a burn on its skin, and the raw flesh of the burn becomes spot, becomes a spot, reddish white or white, the priest shall examine it, and if the hair and the spot has turned white, and it appears deeper than the skin, then it is a leprous disease. It is broken out in the burn, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a case of leprous disease. But if the priest examines it, and there is no white hair in the spot, and it is no deeper than the skin, but is faded, the priest shall shut him up seven days, and the priest shall examine him the seventh day. If it is spreading in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a case of leprous disease. But if the spot remains in one place and does not spread in the skin, but is faded, it is a swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is the scar of the burn. When a man or woman has a disease on the head or the beard, the priest shall examine the disease. And if it appears deeper than the skin, and the hair in it is, is yellow and thin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an itch, a leprous disease of the head or the beard. And if the priest examines the itching disease, and it appears no deeper than the skin, and there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut up the person with the itching disease for seven days. And on the seventh day, the priest shall examine the disease. If the itch is not spread, and there is in it no yellow hair, and the itch appears to be no deeper than the skin, then he shall shave himself, but the itch he shall not say, shave, and the priest shall shut up the person with the itching disease for another seven days. And on the seventh day the priest shall examine the itch, and if the itch has not spread in the skin, and it appears to be no deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the itch spreads in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall examine him. And if the itch is spread in the skin, the priest need not seek for the yellow hair. He is unclean. But if in his eyes the itch is unchanged and black hair has grown in it, the itch, it healed, the itch is healed and he is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. When a man or a woman has spots on the skin of the body, white spots, the priest shall look, and if the spot on the skin of the body are of a dull white, it is leucoderma that is broken out on the skin he is clean if a man's hair falls out from his head he is bald he is clean and if a man's hair falls out from his forehead he has baldness of the forehead he is clean but if there is on the bald head or the bald forehead a reddish white diseased area it is a leprous disease breaking out on his bald head or his bald forehead then the priest shall examine him and if the diseased swelling is reddish white or his bald head or on the bald forehead like the appearance of leprous disease in the skin of the body, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest must pronounce him unclean, his disease is on his head. The leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose, and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean, he shall live alone, his dwelling shall be outside the camp. When there is a case of leprous disease in a garment, whether a woolen or a linen garment, in a warp or woof of linen or wool, or in a skin or in anything made of skin, if the disease is greenish or reddish in the garment, or in the skin or in the warp or the woof, or in any article made of skin, it is a case of leprous disease, and it shall be shown to the priest. And the priest shall examine the disease and shut up that which was, has the disease for seven days. Then he shall examine the disease on the seventh day. If the disease has spread in the garment, in the warp or the woof or in the skin, Whatever be the use of the skin, the disease is a persistent leprous disease, it is unclean. And he shall burn the garment, or the warp, or the woof, the wool of the linen, or any article made of skin that is diseased, 
for it is a persistent leprous disease. It shall be burned in fire. And if the priest examines and if the disease has not spread in the garment, in the warp or the woof or in any article made of skin, then the priest shall command that the they wash the thing in which the is the disease and he shall shut it up for another seven days and the priest shall examine the diseased thing after it has been washed and if the appearance of the diseased area has not changed though the disease has not spread it is unclean you shall burn it in the fire whether the rot on it is on the back or on the front but if the priest examines and if the diseased area has faded after it has been washed he shall tear it out of the garment or the skin or the warp or the woof then if it appears again in the garment, in the warp or the woof, or in any article made of skin, it is spreading. You shall burn with fire whatever has the disease. But the garment or the warp or the woof or any article made of skin from which the disease departs when you have washed it shall then be washed a second time and be clean. This is a law for a case of leprous disease in a garment or wool, garment of wool or linen, either in the warp or the woof or in any article made of skin to determine whether it is clean or unclean. I don't know about you, but that made me want to just like itch all over while I was reading all the itchy stuff about your skin. That was interesting. Acts 16. Timothy joins Paul and Silas, the Macedonian call, the conversion of Lydia, Paul and Silas in prison, and the Philippian jailer converted. Paul came also to Derby and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. And they went through the regions of Persia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go in, on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard of us was a woman named Lydia, from the city of Thyatira, and a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized, and her household as well, she urged us, saying, if you, had ju if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. And Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in, attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off of them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. And when the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they believed. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. 
And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the police saying, let those men go. And the jailer reported these words to Paul saying, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us publicly uncondemned, men who are Roman citizens and have thrown us into prison. And do they now throw us out secretly? No, let them come themselves and take us out. And the police reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologized to them, and they took them out and asked them to leave the city. So they went out of the prison and visited Lydia. And when they had seen the brothers, they encouraged them and departed. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe so that you can continue to join in on the daily Bible study. Like and share with everyone else so they can join in too. You never know who needs encouragement. Don't forget that Jesus loves you, and I pray you have a blessed day.